The movie begins with a quote stating, Love is a knife with a blade for a handle. A man is being recorded, and he talks about a certain night being a quiet one, with not too many people present. A lady was occupying a bar. She was recording the songs from the session. We jump into that fateful night. The man being recorded sits near the lady to tell her some people get weird about something that he doesn't finish saying. Soon a man approaches them to tell the lady he saw her record the man she is sitting beside. He demands she delete it, or he will. The man sitting tells him to relax because it is not a big deal. The lady is Anna, who says she deleted it, but the man rudely takes the device away and wants to see it. This prompts the other one to get in the aggressive man's way, which provokes the latter. It instantly results in the crowd pushing the aggressive man away. As Anna is walking away from the bar, we see he is there waiting for her. He starts to follow her until he grabs her. We learn very quickly that they know each other, and what we saw at the bar was their gig. He is Alex, her boyfriend. He asks if she learned anything. She tells him they will know in a short time. She thinks this one could be money. Later Alex is covering her arm with a wire before she wears a coat over it. They are a couple that records people without their consent for reasons not currently known. The next scene has an elderly man singing inside his house. The couple is sitting close to listen to it. Once the man is finished, he says the only person he ever heard sing that song was his grandfather. Anna tells him hearing songs no one knows about is exciting. She adds they are looking for songs they never heard of. We see a woman who was sitting in the room with them this entire time. She tells the couple they should leave her father in peace, for he doesn't sing these songs for fun. Thus Alex starts to hand money to the elder man, but his daughter snatches it away. The man tells them if they want some great old songs, there is a woman somewhere whose name is Cole Cannon. He says she has the weirdest and oldest songs no one has heard of. Afterward, we watch a man in a wheelchair listening to the recording of the elder man singing. The couple happened to record it while they were in his house. The man removes his headphones to tell Alex the latter did not mislead him, due to the song being beautiful. It is a variant of a song he's never heard of. He also tells Alex not to take what he is about to say the wrong way. He says, Alex came out of nowhere, and they have no prior relationship. He wants Alex to remember him if Alex finds something more solid that can be externally validated. When he heads over to Anna, she goes to the man in the wheelchair to tell him something we don't hear. She returns to her boyfriend with money, telling him they need to move up and invest in their future. Elsewhere, we are introduced to a woman named Agnes, talking to a group of people. She says they are there either because they displayed an exceptional achievement in their area, or they paid a lot of money. She guesses they could be present because they are impatient with the conventional paths to success. However, Agnes says she cannot offer them that. Instead, she can help them recognize the signs they can follow to help them find what they want. We see Anna and Alex are among this crowd. Agnes continues that they find beauty where others have overlooked it. They turn it into a future for themselves. It is a miracle she likens to modern alchemy. Agnes finishes by saying it is up to them to find the places where a rose springs from the corpse of times past. Moving along, everyone gets to listen to Anna sing. Agnes is writing something in the process. Once Anna is done, Agnes says it is an interesting thing. It's a variation that is new to her. She wonders if the couple knows what to do with this discovery. After this session is over, Alex tells Agnes the couple thinks they might know where to find a singer who has a song that isn't a variant. He adds they have done as much digging as they could and still found nothing. He says the woman is called Cannon. Alas, Agnes says that is the name of a dish. Anna apologizes for this mistake. She says she should have known that. Agnes says the person they are talking about might be Maggie Con Cannon, with an N rather than an L. The problem is that she perished at least five years ago. We see a strange image in slow motion involving a woman. It was Anna's dream. Waking up from it, she wastes no time telling Alex that it might not be the same woman who perished. The one mentioned to them by the elder man could be Maggie's daughter. This makes Alex ask how she knows there is a daughter. Anna replies how does he know there isn't. Later the couple occupies a stage with a band. The band starts to play, and Anna starts to sing. It doesn't last long for us to enjoy. In the next scene, the couple is riding at night. Alex says one of them has to talk to someone. Anna thinks he means her by saying that. When she exits the car, she comes to a smoking man to ask for a light and a cigarette. With those given to her, she says she's looking for someone who might be a singer. She says it's not political, but he says there is nothing that isn't political. He asks what the name of the singer is, and Anna says it's Con Cannon. He knows the woman is Rita, who doesn't sing a lot these days. Anna asks if he knows where she lives. Since he worries about if he can trust her, she says she's not doing anything that will hurt anyone. She asks if he can take her there instead, which he agrees to. Following this, they arrive at their destination. The man is Ron, who sees the couple dealing with their recording device, and becomes worried. He tells them he could be in trouble if they use it. Anna tells him they are simply there for the music. Ron says if Rita asks them how they found her, they should not mention him. Once the couple arrives at a house, Alex knocks on its door, causing it to open. He knocks on it again to be sure if they are allowed to enter. No one answers, and the couple walks inside. They observe a lot of interesting items scattered throughout the house, particularly dolls. 
Alex yells out if anyone is present. Opening a door, he sees none other than Agnes sitting in the room. An unseen woman hiding in a cabinet asks Agnes to explain herself. She wants to know who entered, and Agnes says they are her research assistants. She says Alex is a foreigner. Whilst Anna is a good Irish girl with a lovely voice, Agnes tells the arrivals that Rita is a mysterious type. Rita wants to know what brings them there. She calls herself a nobody before asking if they came for her love songs. When she opens the cabinet, they see she is an elderly woman with a bottle of alcohol. She asks the couple if they are lovers, and Alex gives a slight nod. Anna is curious to know if Rita made the dolls in the house. Rita says her son did. She instructs the couple to sit. Agnes asks if Rita would have preferred a daughter, a question the elderly woman firmly responds to, that she would have preferred nothing. Agnes says there was talk that Rita has some songs, but Rita sounds almost rude by saying she doesn't have any for Agnes. Looking at Anna, Rita says she is a well-raised young lady. Anna tells the eccentric woman they came to listen to her. Since she replies she is not for public consumption, Anna takes out the batteries from her recorder and disconnects the wire. She says it's just for them to hear. Rita seems to have an issue with Alex because she says she doesn't want him to hear it. He thanks the woman for a lovely evening prior to leaving the room. Rita says she knows the song Anna wants. Her mother learned it from her mother, who learned it from hers. It is a tradition that stretches back to the old times. The song is not even in Irish. It is in a language that preceded it. Rita says there was a king who loved a poor woman who betrayed him. The punishment he put on her, her lover, and their baby, was terrible. The love inside of them became a curse. Rita says it could be called an evil spirit. The song is from a time that predates written history. When memory was the way people had to hold things, Rita proclaims the song should never be written down or anything like that. It is to be remembered and sung by their women. It doesn't matter if they don't understand the song. They must keep the line from breaking. Rita says the song has no name, but if it did, it would be love as a knife with a blade for a handle. She then starts to make a rasping sound before she starts to sing with soul. The language she sings in is indeed incomprehensible. Due to the amount of herself she pours into her singing, the song almost sounds frightening. Anna leaves after Rita finishes and lets Alex hold her for some reason. Perhaps she was very moved by the authentic song. While they are riding, Alex asks if she remembers any of it. She tries to sing the parts she thinks she remembers. Soon Alex remembers Agnes was walking to her car with a purse held close to her. He gets angry probably because he thinks she was recording the song like they usually do. Thus they get in front of her car to stop Agnes from driving away. They all exit their vehicles, and Agnes plays Rita's song on a recorder for them. Anna says she promised Rita she would not do this. Yet Agnes claims not to have made such a promise. Switching to Rita, drinking at her house, someone unseen comes to her to hold the bottle in her mouth. Agnes tells the couple she guesses they are in this together. The next scene has a puppet show taking place, and the audience is booing it for an unknown reason. We see the man controlling the puppets as he stresses about the disapproval. Following this, the puppeteer arrives at Rita's house. He announces to his mom he is home. Once he goes upstairs to look for her, we see a shadow walking behind him. It doesn't take long for him to find his mother with a broken bottle, in her mouth, and eye. Strangely, the man does not react commonly from seeing this, like by screaming, or being visibly shocked. At a different time, he gets phoned by someone. The person asks about his mom, prompting him to lie that she is preparing tea. He acts by lowering the phone to yell to his mom that the caller is giving her a greeting. Our attention is then brought to Ron, singing alone with a beer. He gets knocked unconscious by an unseen person. When he awakens, he finds himself restrained to a bed, and screams in fear. The man who did this to him is Rita's son, Breeze Block. Ron is restrained near a deceased Rita. He tells Breeze Block it wasn't him who did this to her. The captor says his grandmother was something else concerning singing. She used to sleep in this house, which he did not like. He did not know what was real half of the time. Ron says he heard stories about her, and she was a powerful woman. Breeze Block talks about having seen black smudgy things. They started talking to him. His grandmother was lying in bed, laughing. He knew she knew something was going on. The man complains about having tried to sleep with the smudgy things looking at him. At this moment, Ron tries to free himself, only to get Rita to fall on him. His captor slams him for the attempt before he lowers his pants to show a grotesque part of him. Ron tells him about Anna without using her name. She was looking for old songs. He mentions Alex too. Breezeblock says he will return once he finds them. He leaves and we see shadows drawing close to Ron. Soon he screams in fear. In the next scene, Agnes works on Rita's song with Alex beside her. It is an exhausting task for her to decipher the words of the language. Alex reads a sentence of what she has deciphered. Agnes considers the words to be romantic. Another sentence reads, When she saw what she had done to her child, her screaming was great and could not be ended. Alex is about to go to Anna, but Agnes plays the song. It seems to mesmerize him. He says he feels like he has to listen to it, so he returns to sit. Agnes says she played it hundreds of times. She asks if he isn't bored of it. Alex replies the deeper it gets inside of him, the more he wants it. He reaches for her, and she starts to shake. 
We get the image again that was maybe Anna's dream. It looks like it has people from the distant past. Alex gets a message from Anna, saying she is worried about him. She also says she is scared and she wants him to call her. Alas, he is cheating on her with Agnes. Another message has her cursing him. More bizarre images of the strange people are displayed. We learn Anna has sent Alex a large number of unanswered messages. Breezeblock visits the bar to talk to the man from the start of the film. The former uses the information he got from Ron to ask about Anna. He doesn't use her name due to him not knowing it. The man does not seem to remember Anna. This prompts Breezeblock to ask if he heard of his mom, Rita Concanon. He says Anna visited her and the visit resulted in something bad. The man wants to know what business is that of his. Breezeblock says he can make it his business. Afterward, we see Anna walking on the street alone, seeming lost. Breezeblock rides near her, stopping his van. The next scene has him opening the van with Anna sitting inside. He takes her into a building, where he says he will have to restrain her. Oddly, she lets him do it. She asks if he's going to take her life, and he answers he hopes he won't. Once he restrains her, he gets to the crucial point by asking what happened to his mother. Anna doesn't know. He tells her the last time he saw his mom, she was deceased. She learns Rita is his mother. Thinking about what he told her, Anna says she didn't think she was going to do it. Breezeblock wants to know who she means. Anna reflects on the person she is thinking of as having been waiting there when they arrived. Of course, she is talking about Agnes without using her name. Anna told her that Rita had something Agnes wanted. She says she and Alex just wanted the songs, but Agnes is evil. Breezeblock demands to know who she is talking about since her name still isn't being used. Anna says she could tell him her name in addition to where she met Agnes. However, she doesn't know where the woman lives. Anna wants to help him because she thinks Agnes needs to be punished. She says Alex left her weeks ago. He was working with the horrible woman, as Anna refers to her. She finally tells him her name. Her captor says he will be back and leaves her there restrained. We then see Agnes visiting a doctor. He asks if she is sure she's not pregnant. She could not be more sure is her response. The reason for her sureness is that she had a hysterectomy. She wonders if she has cancer, which the doctor considers very unlikely. The purpose of this visit leaves us curious concerning what is wrong with her. Later, Anna wakes up with Breezeblock returning to her. He got her chips to eat and undoes her restraints. He tells her he did not find Alex along with Agnes. She asks if he wants to hear his mother's song, for she remembers some of it. He does, so she starts to sing it. While she does, we revisit the strange images of the people with painted faces. One of them seems to be eating raw meat. Once Anna finishes singing, he is curious to know what language it is in. She thinks it is older than Irish. She could write down the words if it will help him find Agnes. Following this, Agnes arrives at a building where we hear Alex. Coming to him, she asks if she can get him anything. He doesn't sound like himself when he talks to her. He says he wants chicken and would like a whole one, if possible. Soon she watches him eat a chicken in an uncultured way. Alex says he wants her for dessert, therefore he starts touching her. Interestingly, we were not allowed to see his face the entire time. In the next scene, Breezeblock enters a library, asking an employee if they have a book on Old Irish. The employee happens to have such a book right near her. He asks if she can tell him who checked it out last, but she cannot. In a short time, he returns to Anna with the book and says they should go to work. During closed hours he breaks into the library to search in the cabinets. He finds a file that he looks through. In the meantime, Anna is busy using the book he brought to decipher the words of the special song. Later, Breezeblock is with her, reading what she deciphered. He remarks on the meaning that the king must have loved the woman a lot. Anna asks if people do things like what he did to the people they love. He replies, she would be amazed. Anna thinks the king did it to her to prove there is no such thing as love. Hearing this makes Breezeblock read the love is a knife part of the song. Anna says if someone gets locked away with nothing to eat, they will do anything to survive, even consume their- Breezeblock thinks that is simply nature and has nothing to do with love. He also thinks the king was trying to tell the woman her love was made up to punish her. Starving someone to madness proves nothing. He asks if she could sing the song for him again. Anna wants him to find Agnes's address. If he will, she might sing for him. At her meeting, Agnes listens to a man sing while she writes the words she hears. She looks disheveled. Once the group leaves, Agnes has a hard time standing up. She has to hold her stomach in pain as she walks. Soon she comes to Alex, and he says he missed her very much. He talks about their souls being intertwined. Agnes approaches his bed, which is covered in plastic. She moves the plastic to the side and he grabs her hand. He tells her to entertain him. After she does, she goes to another room to cry. Outside the building, Breezeblock arrives with Anna. He tells her Agnes lives there. Thus they enter the building, where it doesn't take long for them to find Agnes, resting on a chair. Anna runs to attack her, but Breezeblock takes her off. Anna tells him Agnes took his mother's life. Agnes opposes this accusation by saying Rita was alive when the former left. What Anna wants to know is where Alex is. Agnes points to the location, telling Anna he isn't well. 
She goes to the plastic cover and moves it to the side before looking at Alex with a shocked expression. We finally see his face. The man has become hairless in addition to looking very sick. Anna asks if Agnes did this to him yet he replies, he is fine. Meanwhile, Breeze Block asks Agnes if she took his mother's life. She asks why would she if she acquired the song she wanted. He asks if she knows what the song does, and she thinks she's starting to understand. One thing she knows for certain is that Alex is getting smaller while she is getting bigger. She says there is a reason all the women in his family's history kept the song to themselves. There's a secret in it, and she thinks them breaking it is the cause of what is happening. Switching to Anna, she tells Alex she will call an ambulance to save him. He gives her the unsettling words that he is fine, but soon will be deceased. He also says he will be coming back. Later, Agnes lets Breeze Block know she sometimes sees things moving. He becomes worried because he knows what she is talking about, the shadows he told Ron about. Agnes wonders if the special song is a spell that contains a demon or a god. She thinks the curse has something to do with love. To love until one is consumed by one's lover, or the reverse of that. She says what people call love now isn't this. Agnes guesses this force has existed before humans and thinks it is uncontrollable hunger. However, Breeze Block is most interested in learning what happened to his mom. Agnes says his mother broke her promise to whatever lives in the song. Back to the couple, Anna tells Alex it is time to leave. He says it will be over in a short time. Afterward, they will be together. Soon something starts to happen that we don't see. It scares Anna away. Breeze Block heads over to her due to hearing the lady cry. She does not hesitate to say they need to take the life of the man she probably loves. She adds that he took the life of Breeze Block's mom. Instead of doing that, he takes her to Agnes, who is suffering. Anna collects a tool from his toolbox and goes to Alex to attack him with it. Her companion can only watch behind the obscuring plastic cover. For some reason, Anna directs herself to Breeze Block to stab him in the neck. When she leaves we see the shadows appearing to claim him. In the meantime, Agnes suffers on the floor. Anna watches her while singing Rita's song. Soon Agnes transforms into a pale person with white hair. Anna is now on her knees, drawing near the strange being whose sudden existence is inexplicable. The being asks her with an inhuman voice if she still loves Alex, and she says she does. He or she asks Anna if she knows what has to happen now. Anna responds she thinks she does. The being says she is going to become a part of them prior to the former's face shifting from the current one to Alex's to Agnes's. The pale person says they are very hungry and brings our heroine down to start eating her. Following this, we see the people from the distant past again. The woman seems to be holding a that she is partially eaten. From this, we finally understand who these people are. The woman is the ancient who was cursed by the king. The last scene has the pale being who harbors both Alex and Agnes walking away outside. 